This program is brought to you by Emory University. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to our very first webinar. My name is Tanya Willard. I am the Director of Orientation at Emory College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and I first want to congratulate all of you for your, for your admittance and for your acceptance here at Emory. We're really excited to see you in the fall. Um, thanks for joining us. We know that it's probably very early or very late where you are, and so we really appreciate you all staying up or getting up early for us. We really appreciate it. I also want to say a special hello and a welcome to any parents and family members who are joining us today. We're thrilled that you're here as well. Um, so our topic for today is international students and we have with us Jimmy Camonjo from the International Student and Scholar Services Office. Um, and I'm going to turn this over to him in just a minute, but before I do that, I just want to give you a quick synopsis of what we're going to be covering today and kind of what you can expect. Um, so Jimmy's going to do about a 20 minute ish or so presentation um, and then we will leave time at the end for some questions and answers. Um, you'll also notice that at the bottom of your screen there is a chat box. If you have questions during the middle of the presentation, please feel free to post your questions down there and we will try to get to as many questions and answers as we can um, before the end of it. Um, so please feel free to use that chat box as well. Um, let's see what else. Q&A at the end. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over uh, to Jimmy Camonjo and he will take it away. Hi everybody. Again, welcome to the PowerPoint uh, webinar and congratulations to all of you once again for being admitted to Emory. We are awesomely looking forward to having you all here. Um, my name is Jimmy Camonjo. I am the Senior International Student Advisor and I advise uh, some of the undergraduate students last name O to Z and the Grusetta Business School students. Uh, we have um, one of my other colleagues advises the other population, and I'll be getting into that in some later slides. So uh, thanks all for joining us. Okay, you ready? Yes. All right. Thank you. Here we go. So we are going to be discussing uh, several issues regarding your uh, status as international students being admitted to Emory. There's a lot of critical information that is available online and we're not going to be able to cover it all today uh, but hopefully the resources that I am uh, uh, addressing will be helpful in, in allowing you to uh, uh, plan uh, between now and when you're going to arrive on campus uh, in August. Uh, uh, this is me and again I advise the undergraduate students last name O2Z and the Grusetta Business School students and that is my email address. Uh, the other advisor is uh, name is Kyla King. Uh, she advises undergraduate students, for, uh, last name A through N, and uh, Canada uh, School of Theology International students, and that is her email. The topics that we're going to cover today are uh, navigating the ISSS website. Uh, we're going to talk about peer arrival and international student orientation, uh, briefly about Emory College orientation, parents orientation, uh, housing, and English language testing. So this is the website, uh, the main website at ISSS, which is www.emory.edu slash ISSS. Uh, there's a lot of very important information that is available there once you get here to Emory, but right now what we're going to focus on is the pre-arrival information. Um, so uh, if you click on the pre-arrival uh, uh, link, uh, you're going to be directed to another site that is specifically for uh, pre-arrival and orientation for the year 2013-2014. Um, and it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly talk about or highlight uh, the most important things that I think that need to be uh, addressed or uh, in, that I need to inform you about uh, regarding planning uh, your arrival uh, here in the U.S. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about, I'm assuming um, and I'm hoping that most of you by now will have gotten your packets from admissions with your I-20s uh, and you're uh, planning on uh, making your embassy appointments so that you can apply for your visas to be to get here 
in the fall. Uh, one of the most important things before you go to the embassy uh, is that you will need to pay your CVC. I believe you should have all received instructions about how to do that. There is the website that you need to go to. Pay the fee at least three days before your embassy visit because it takes a while for that information to, be, to filter to the consular service office so that they have uh, they see the documentation or the evidence that the fee has been paid. In addition to that, I ask students to print out a receipt of that CBC payment and take that with you when you go to the embassy. Uh, if you're having a difficult time figuring out how to pay the fee or what else you would need to do in regards to that, please feel free to email me or Kyla and we would be happy to assist. Uh, the other part that I want to emphasize and or highlight is uh, obtaining your visa. Uh, one of the most important things obviously uh, now that you have been admitted to Emory is that uh, all your conversations and your interview are going to be conducted, uh, conducted in English. So uh, that's something that you need to be prepared of. Now if you're not confident in your spoken English Perhaps you might want to prep uh, with a friend uh, in terms of how you're going to have a conversation with a visa officer. Uh, your parent or relative is not going to be able to answer questions on your behalf. And so that's something that you really need to uh, look forward to. Uh, on the website, we have information about the type of questions that they ask. So make sure that you spend some time on the website uh, to, to learn about how that process goes. Make sure that you're clear in your communication and you need to be prepared to answer questions about your plans while you are a student at Emory and your plans after graduation because what the visa type that you're applying for is a non-immigrant visa category and so you have to show that you intend to return home upon graduation. Uh, the other information that we have is planning your arrival into the United States. Uh, the critical thing to remember is that you can only enter no earlier than 30 days before your program started on your I-20. If you look at your I-20, uh, I don't know if you have your I-20 in front of you, but if you look at your I-20 in number 5, it has what is called a program start date. And for most of you, your program start date will, will either be August the 28th, for some of you, the date on there is August the 23rd. Um, and so the earliest you can arrive into the U.S. is um, uh, July the 23rd or the 28th, respectively. Uh, now, I would not advise doing that because, you know, we have prepared an orientation for you which starts on August the 23rd. So it makes sense that you're going to be arriving just around the time an orientation is beginning. Um, Make sure that you have your I-20 with you uh, in person when you arrive at the port of entry in the United States. Please do not check in your uh, I-20 with your luggage. It's going to make it very difficult for you to be allowed to enter the United States without it. So make sure that you have it in hand when you uh, on the plane. Uh, the other piece that I want to mention is uh, if you are going to have any connecting flights between your home country and Atlanta, be sure to plan to leave adequate time to transfer or to uh, 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 go through customs because uh, you might expect delays and you know we certainly don't want you to miss any connecting flights or be delayed unnecessarily and, and be inconvenienced. So uh, please uh, be aware of that. If you have any questions about what your flight plan should be, for example. You can email me and I'm happy to provide you with some information about what you might want to do. Uh, on, on the next uh, link there, we have information regarding student orientation. We have several orientations uh, based on the individual schools that we have here at Emory. Uh, the ones that I want to highlight there are the ones that are for international students and for international parents. Uh, the international student orientation is on the 23rd and the 24th. Um, exclusively on the 23rd, it's going to cover international related matters. On the 24th in the morning, there is English language testing and um, 
and then in the afternoon uh, you're going to participate in the regular new student orientation with the rest of the new students uh, that have been admitted at Emory. And for the parents who are here, we have uh, our, an orientation for you on the uh, August 23rd as well, uh, at a different time than the, than the time frame that your child is going to be attending orientation on that Friday. So uh, just something to be aware of. Uh, on the left there, I have three links that I have highlighted that I think are important for you to read. Everything on this on this pre-arrival website is important, but I'm just highlighting some of the things that I, I want to uh, want to add an attention to be to be paid to them. Uh, for those students who are arriving uh, prior to orientation, there's some good information there about the expectations of of that. Uh, if you are a student who is returning from an extended leave of absence, uh, either from a personal leave or a military leave, uh, there are there is going to be a special orientation for you. So if you just go down the list, you'll see the date uh, of that orientation with additional details to be sent to you later. Uh, we also have uh, down below an FAQ, which is uh, um, has some beneficial information uh, regarding uh, most of the questions that we received from uh, uh, students. Uh, for the parents, uh, there is a link there regarding uh, 10 of the best reasons why we think that you should attend orientation if you can. Uh, there's also an FAQ specifically for parents uh, with some very helpful information. Um, if you click on the FAQ, you can see the, the list of questions that are indicated there. And you, you, I, I just want to go back and mention that uh, the, you can access uh, the website through the the, the, the the homepage or if not the the link to the e the link to the website is indicated above so again for those who are having questions uh, getting access to the website I'm happy to to uh, help in that and also on the right side there there are quick links that I think are also very beneficial for parents to find out about information and services that are offered for your child while they're here and that's just a a, 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 a very few number of them um, this is, uh, uh, very quickly, uh, the page for Emory College Orientation, which is the overall orientation information that is provided to all the newly admitted students at Emory. Um, but the links that are on the right, on the left there, are uh, some that I think are beneficial for you to know, even though all of them are important for you to, uh, to read. Tanya, I don't know whether you wanted to add anything to, regarding this particular page. Uh, no, we'll cover it kind of at the end. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of housing, uh, most of you should be receiving information regarding your housing assignment very soon. Uh, it is mandatory for uh, new international students to live on campus for at least the first couple of years, so, um, so hopefully you're going to be getting that soon. Um, what I want to mention here is that uh, international students will be allowed to move in earlier than usual. Uh, the moving date uh, that you're going to be allowed to move in is August the 23rd. All the other new students are allowed to move in on the 24th and so um, that's something that you will want to be aware of. and I'll, I'll, I'll give it some additional detail regarding planning to arrive in the U.S. So um, there's information there about when moving is supposed to be. So if you just um, read through that and um, and let me know by email if you have any questions regarding moving. Since moving is on August the 23rd, um, if we advise you to come at least two days, if you can, before moving to accommodate um, your travel plans and being able to adjust before you have to engage in orientation. We have we recommend that you make reservations with the Emory Conference Center Hotel um, and we have uh, secured a room block. Uh, just to note that this is something that you're going to have to pay for. Um, but if you have questions regarding that, you can let me know. Uh, there will be Emory shuttles uh, taking students from the Conference Center Hotel to your individual residence hall to allow you to move in on that Friday morning. Uh, so again, we highly recommend that students come in at least a couple of days before orientation to allow a level of adjustment and, 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 and dealing with 
uh, jet lag recovery so that when you're participating in orientation on, on, on Friday morning, uh, you will be in a position to, to get a lot out of it. Uh, for those who might not want to stay at the Emory Conference Center Hotel, there is a list of other hotels within the Emory vicinity that uh, uh, are available to make reservations. Um, we ask that if you are going to do that, you can ask to be dropped off at the uh, uh, check-in location on Friday morning, which is uh, Few Hall. Um, so again, if you are going to stay outside the con Conference Center Hotel, which is on campus, uh, and you're going to stay in any of the other hotels within uh, or the close to campus uh, that you'd be dropped off in Hugh, Few Hall, which is where check-in is on Friday morning. Uh, we are going to talk about um, uh, English language testing. Uh, Jane O'Connor is the director of uh, the English language uh, uh, English uh, as a second language uh, office, and Denise Dolan is her assistant. Uh, none of them are available here today, but I am going to cover briefly uh, some of the things that they would like you to be aware of as you plan to uh, uh, do the language testing. Uh, during orientation, most of the international students will be required to take English language testing. All you will need to do is write a very short essay uh, for the ESL staff, and they will look at the, at, the, at, the, at the essay to determine what is going to be the best English class for you to take. The assessment will take place at the Woodruff, Wood, Woodruff Library or the Callaway Library during orientation, and this is on Saturday morning. Uh, you will be told during the time of assessment uh, where to show up uh, for the uh, testing that morning. There are exceptions, exemptions to taking the orientation excuse me, to, to taking the testing for the English language. Uh, these are some of the uh, exempt, exemptions that are given to students based on the individual circumstance of your English uh, uh, proficiency. Uh, so for those who have been living here in the, in the United States for at least five years um, and can provide a, an approved writing sample, um, you will probably be able to get an exemption uh, students who obviously speak English as a first language, um, students who have advanced placement or international baccalaureate um, or transfer credits um, that exempt um, them from taking uh, classes as a freshman, and also those who are going to be attending the ACE program, the Academics and Culture program at, at Emory. Uh, it is important to note that the exemption is not automatic. You are going to have to request an exemption. So please send an email to the address there that is indicated oue.esl at emory.edu and request an exemption based on your individual circumstance and whether you feel that uh, an exemption is necessary based on what, you, what your English proficiency level is. Um, English class requirements, a registration for those who will take uh, English uh, assessment. Uh, you will either have to take a special session of English 101 with ESL support in either the fall or spring semester. There are seven sessions this year. They've been added from last year. Uh, or you will be advised to register for any other section of English that fulfills the first year writing requirement. Uh, for those who will be taking the special session of English 101, uh, students advised to take this uh, will, must confirm via email that they wish to take it or, or place, excuse me, they wish to take the place or it, or it will be offered to another student. Uh, selected students will be enrolled into these, selected, into these sections by the EEA team, the Emory English Assessment Team. Uh, this class is an English 101 class that, like any other section, ESL does not appear on the student's transcript, so that's something that you will want to be aware of. The only difference between this section of English 101 and any other composition class is that students receive extra specialized language support. 
Uh, this is the ESL uh, website uh, that is linked. Uh, these are some of the services that they offer. Um, and so if you have any, if you feel like you, it's something that you're going to need support with, Jane O'Connor or Denise Dolan are there to answer any questions regarding uh, additional English language support while you are here at Emory. Again, this is my contact information and this is the contact of Jane O'Connor, the director of ESL. And if you have any questions regarding any Thing immigration related you can email me if you have questions regarding English as a second language please email Jen O'Connor uh, both our websites are linked so you can access our website or call us or email us and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions this is the ISSS website staff this is the full staffing uh, the director is Lula Crawford. We have uh, associate directors, senior advisors, and support staff. So uh, when you contact our office or if you want to contact somebody specifically, here is where you can find each and, one, each and every one of us uh, for any additional questions. And our office is located in the North Decatur building, which is on 1784 North Decatur Road. Uh, you don't need to know that at this point, but you will need to know that when you get to campus. Uh, this is the office uh, telephone number, the office website, and the office email, a uh, general email. Again, I indicated my actual email address. Kyla King's email address is also indicated in the presentation. If you want to email us directly, please feel free to do so, or you can email it to the general ISSS email. And so we're going to open up the floor to any questions. Okay. Um, Jimmy, thank you very much. Um, I do want to clarify a couple things. Um, one of the things that uh, Jimmy posted was a listing of area hotels besides the Emory Conference Center. Um, and he found that list on the orientation webpage, which is www.college.emory.edu slash orientation. Um, and when you go to that site on the left side, there is a section that says planning your visit. Um, and if you click on hotels, that's where you can find that listing. Um, so I wanted to cover that. Um, he also mentioned the survey. And that is something that all international students have to fill out. Um, if you haven't done that, please do it as soon as possible. That's how we determine our shuttle schedule from the airport to the conference center. And that's how Jane O'Connor and the uh, English assessment team will work to determine which students will be taking the exam and which won't be. So please, 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 if you haven't done that survey, uh, please do that as soon as possible. Um, you should have gotten that in an email from me last week, I believe. So um, if you haven't done it, please do it as soon as you can so we can make sure that the shuttles are scheduled accordingly. If I could also add about the sure. survey, uh, uh, one of the things that we get from the survey is uh, uh, knowing who is going to arrive for orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a list that is created so that uh, students are allowed to move in on August the 23rd into the residence hall. So that is a big piece of where we get that information from. So yeah. Yeah, it's really important. So if you can do that, uh, as soon as possible so that we can move forward, that would be really, really helpful. Um, I also wanted to clarify the housing move-in. Um, I just want to make sure because I'm already getting lots of questions about it, so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, you'll be able to move into your residence hall, your, the room that you will be assigned to starting on the morning of Friday, August 23rd. Um, I know some of you are arriving the day before or two days before. Um, unfortunately, we cannot allow you to move in until the morning of the 23rd. Uh, the halls are empty and there's not enough staffing and it's just not the most welcoming environment, which we want to make sure that you have. Um, so that is why we're asking you to find a hotel, um, which will be able to, there'll be someone there to help you um, and you'll have clean sheets and all of that good stuff. Um, and then on Friday morning, we'll start running a shuttle service from the conference center to the main campus and there will be orientation leaders there to help you get checked in and move your stuff across campus. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're all clear on that because that is a question that I get all the time. So um, with that said, don't forget there is a chat box uh, at the bottom of your screen. If you have a question, please type it in and know that we're a pretty small group tonight. Um, so please, if you have a question, 
um, that's what that chat box is for. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add that we didn't get to cover tonight? Um, I mean, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I think the most important thing is knowing that, uh, you know, if you have questions or you uh, are struggling with something regarding uh, whether you've received your I-20 or uh, you don't know what to do from there, or if you have questions about what you should expect when you go to, before you go to the embassy, uh, you can certainly call or email our office. So I think that's uh, that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Unless there's any. Questions. Okay, we have a question coming in. I'm just watching it um, being typed on the screen, so we're going to stall just a little bit while we wait for that. Um, while we're waiting for the questions to come in, um, I do want to let you know that this is the first in our webinar series for the summer. There are several more coming up. The next week at the same time, we will actually be doing two different topics. We're going to do an introduction to orientation, uh, Emory College orientation, which Jimmy referred to during his presentation. Um, and that will be from 7 p.m. till about 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time one week from tonight. And then from 7.30 until about 8 p.m. Also Eastern Standard Time, we'll be covering residence life and housing, which I know is a huge area of concern. You all will have lots of questions about that. Um, so we'll have staff here from the Office of Residence Life and Housing next week and they'll be able to answer all your questions. Um, registration for that webinar will open up sometime tomorrow and you'll have plenty of time to get signed up for that. Um, other topics that we're covering this summer in addition to those two are student financial services and how to pay for college. Um, as well as an introduction to uh, academic advising here at Emory and how to navigate OPUS. Um, so hopefully you'll be all ready when you come here to be successful and have a great time while you're here. Um, we have a question. The question that just came in is about payment. Um, and that's a great question and I, I appreciate that one coming in. That is a question that would be best asked, I think, when we come to our student financials um, webinar, which I believe is July 18th, um, and that would be a great question to ask that. We'll have representatives from the Office of Financial Aid and Student Financial Services um, because that is such a personalized um, topic, uh, payment and tuition and scholarships and those sorts of things are very individualized and so it's hard for us to answer such a specific question, but thank you for the question. Okay, great. Um, I am not seeing any other questions come through, and I know that you either probably want to go to bed at this point or you are ready to get up and start your day. Um, so I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. Just a couple things before you leave. This webinar is being recorded, so if there's some information that you didn't catch the first time, there are a lot of email addresses and web addresses that came up. If, if you happen to miss any of those, um, we will record this and post it on Blackboard and YouTube so that you'll be able to go back and watch it as many times uh, as you would like to. Um, if you still have questions for us or if you think of something after we leave, there are lots of ways to get in touch, in touch with us. Um, you can email us at ec.orientation at emory.edu. Um, you can call us on the hotline, which is 404-727-9000. Um, or you can reach out to us on Twitter. You can follow us at Twitter. We are at ECAS, that's E-C-A-S, orientation, um, and we would love to hear from you there as well. Let's see, I believe I have covered everything. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We hope that you will join us again next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.